Now that you are in a deep trance, we are going to give you a trigger, or reinforce it if you already have it. The trigger phrase is I am a Charizard. If you use this trigger phrase, or if someone that you trust says the trigger phrase you are a Charizard, you will undergo the transformation that you are about to experience again at whatever speed you want. Additionally, you will instantly turn back into a human if you use the reset phrase I am not a Charizard, or if someone that you trust says the reset phrase you are not a Charizard. Now the transformation will begin. First, feel tiny tingling sensations all over your body as tiny smooth scales slide into place, replacing all of your skin and causing any hair that you have to fall out and disappear as they do so. Most of the scales are orange but the scales on the front of your torso that are below your shoulders, as well as those that are on the underside of your torso, are cream-colored. Also, the cream-colored scales go into the space of the orange-colored ones on the front of your torso in the shape of a semicircle. The base of the semicircle is the top of the section of cream-colored scales on the front of your torso, and is one-fourth as tall as your shoulders are. Now, feel a pulling sensation at the base of your spine as a tail starts to grow. It is as long as you are tall and starts out being as wide as you are but gradually gets smaller until it ends in a dull point. The scales on the top of your tail are orange while the scales on the bottom of it are cream colored. There is a bright and big flame that is emitted from the tip of your tail, and you will find its warmth nice and watching it to be mesmerizing. Of course, there won't actually be a flame being emitted from the end of your tail, and you will act accordingly. However, you will never find it strange or unusual that it doesn't light things on fire and never be able to understand any logic when it is applied in a way that directly suggests that it should. Additionally, while you will feel like the flame that is emitted from the end of your tail heats you up, it won't actually and you will act according to your actual temperature, but you will be completely unaware of this and not be able to understand any logic when it is applied in a way that suggests that the flame at the end of your tail isn't heating you up. As all of this is happening, all of the scales on the back of your torso that are below your tail become cream colored. Next, feel a pulling sensation on your entire face as it stretches out to form a long muzzle. As this happens your entire nose disappears, the only remnants of it being your nose holes which are now located in the top left and top right corners of the front side of your muzzle. Now, feel a pulling sensation in two round spots that are vertically centered one third of the way down your back. They are each one-sixth as wide as your torso is and one of them is horizontally located halfway between the left side and the center of your back while the other one is horizontally located halfway between the right side and the center of your back. From those spots, orange scaly wings start to grow that are each twice as long as your torso is wide. They each grow so that they can be rotated forwards and backwards, as well as so that you can fold them an action which allows you to make them be not nearly as long as they are when they are unfolded. The first fourth of each of them is angled upwards 30 degrees, the second fourth of them is angled upwards 60 degrees, the fourth sixth of them is angled downwards 30 degrees, the fifth sixth of them is angled downwards 60 degrees, and the last sixth of them is angled downwards 90 degrees. On each of your wings there are two spines. One of them is located halfway down each of them, and is shaped like a cylinder that is as wide as your wings are and that is as tall as them. It attaches to the underside of your wings. The other one is located 6 inches of the way down your wings and is also located on the bottom side of them. It is cylindrical like the other one is but is so thin that it can barely be seen, and it is much shorter than the other one is, resulting in the bottom of it being level with the bottom of the other one. Additionally, the first 6 inches of your wings are rotated 45 degrees upwards, but this doesn't affect the rotation of the rest of your wings. Furthermore, a cylindrical extrusion forms two-thirds of the way down your wings on the top of them. It is as wide as your wings are and as tall as your hands are long. Also, all of the edges of it are rounded and they are almost angled straight up, but they are each slightly rotated downwards towards the base of your wings. On each of your wings, a teal-colored leathery material covers the area between where your wings connect to your back and the shorter spine on them, from the shorter spine on them to the taller spine on them, as well as from the taller spine on them to the end of your wings. These three sections of leathery material connect to each other and completely cover the spines on each of your wings. Also, 
these sections curve inwards a bit as they approach the center of them so that at their center the top of them is 4 inches more inwards than the parts of them that connect to your spines and the edges of your wings are. Additionally, your wings are not strong enough to allow you to fly, or even slow your fall, and you will never attempt to use them to do so. After that, feel claws that are made of a hard and durable material start to grow out of the front of your fingers. Their bases are each one-third as wide and half as tall as the finger that they are on. Also, they are horizontally and vertically centered on the fingers that they are on. They are half an inch long and gradually curve down and get narrower and shorter so that they each end in a dangerously sharp point that points straight down and that is level with the bottom of the fingers that they are on. Despite the fact that your claws are dangerously sharp, you will never attempt to use them for anything, especially combat. Then, the toes second to the left and second to the right on each of your feet shrink away and disappear. After that happens, your remaining toes change shape and material so that they are shaped exactly like your new claws are. The only difference is that the claws on your feet are one-fifth as wide as your feet are, as tall as your feet are, and as long as your longest toe used to be. Just like with the claws on your hands, you will never attempt to use the claws on your feet for anything, especially combat despite the fact that they too are dangerously sharp. Next, feel your ears move to the top of your head. As this happens, they become shaped like cylinders with rounded edges that are one-fifth as wide as your head is and as tall as your head is. Once your new ears have reached the top of your head, they rotate so that they are pointing halfway between straight back and straight up. You will find that your hearing is just as good as it was before the transformation began despite how different your new ears are from your old ones. Now, your irises are turning the same shade of blue that fire becomes when it gets really hot. As this happens, your mind changes in several ways. The first mental change is that when you are feeling angry at someone or are trying to scare or intimidate someone, you will have a barely controllable urge to roar at them as loudly and fiercely as you can. The second mental change is that you will have a strong but easily controllable desire to become stronger. This desire will be strongest in relation to physical strength, but you will also have a somewhat weaker desire to strengthen your mind. The last mental change is that you will find that you are strongly attracted to sources of heat and strongly repulsed by sources of coolness. The hotter or colder something is the more you will be attracted or repulsed by it respectively. However, this will never be an inconvenience for you or cause you to do anything unsafe. For example, you won't ever let yourself get dangerously hot and you won't avoid cooling off. Another example is that while you will not like being near an open fridge you won't be repulsed by it if you need to get something from a fridge or put something in one. Finally, the effects of this hypnosis file will become inactive if they are a risk to your physical body or your well-being, if they are a risk to your social or professional life, if there is an emergency that they would prevent you from dealing with to the best of your abilities, or if they are a risk to your mental health. Also, any effect of this hypnosis file that was an issue will become active again once it no longer will be one. Additionally, you will never find this hypnosis file or the effects of it even slightly addicting. You have transformed into an anthro charizard, so I wonder how loud and fierce your roar will be. This session is almost over, so goodbye, my fiery friend.